This video, which is the third video about the multi-dataflow composer tool, is meant to discuss the features that it can offer besides simple data path composition. The first feature that will be discussed is the structural profiler. The profiler is meant to provide constraint-driven optimization of the reconfigurable substrate under composition. This feature is available for ASIC design only. Let's see which are the problems behind merging. The number merged input specifications may affect the results you get. As it can be noticed by this example, merging all the provided inputs does not lead to the highest power saving. The merging order affects the achievable performance too. Please note that you merge two networks at a time and that the switching element are purely combinatorial ones. Indeed, the feeding sequence, while you are composing the networks, may affect the maximum achievable operating frequency leading, in some cases, to longer critical path. To tackle these issues, MDC Structural Profiler explores the entire space of design points, corresponding to different numbers of dataflow specifications kept in parallel, from none to all. The design points, exploiting an a priori library characterization, are evaluated in terms of area, static power and frequency. Numbers are determined at the dataflow level and used for an automated Pareto analysis of the design space. This analysis identifies the optimal points in terms of area, power, and frequency. Area and power optimal points normally refer to the same substrate configuration, since we are currently considering here static power consumption. The optimal frequency point may, on the contrary, be different. The second feature we added to MDC framework is a dynamic power manager. This feature is specifically intended to guarantee power efficiency of the composed substrate. In coarse grain virtually reconfigurable data path, as those composed by MDC, the different input specifications are never executed at the same time. Reconfiguration is achieved by multiplexing resources in time. Given this example, when alpha is executed, four actors are in idle. Enabling beta means executing three actors and one switching element. The execution of gamma, which is the largest input specification, implies three unused actors. Please note that unused processing elements waste power. MDC provides support for the automatic application of power saving techniques. An algorithm identifies, at the dataflow level during the merging phase, disjoined logic regions of actors always active or inactive together. These regions are exploited to identify the parts of the circuit that can be gated during the execution, when an input specification not involving them is requested. When the hardware substrate is generated, power-saving strategies are automatically applied. MDC is able to apply, to all of the identified regions, clock gating when targeting either FPGA or ASIC technologies. Power gating inapplicable only in the ASIC case. MDC has also the capability of understanding, for an ASIC design, if an hybrid solution optimally combining both power and clock gating is better. The last supported MDC feature is the automatic coprocessing units generation. This feature is meant to guarantee fast system integration, providing as an output ready to be used Zilinx IPs. In fact, you can be able to generate flexible and super-optimized reconfigurable data path, but it would still be difficult to make them talk with the other system components without an adequate support. Manual generation would nullify the benefits of the automatic composition of a reconfigurable data path. The MDC coprocessor generator faces the problem of how to use a multifunctional automatically generated RTL design in real use case scenarios. A coarse grain substrate can be typically considered as the core computing part of an hardware accelerator, but a huge effort may be required to design the rest of the system, which involves configuration logic, memories and a finite state machine to load and store data. Data loading and data storing are both application specific. Therefore, an ad hoc finite state machine has to be designed to delegate a given set of functionalities to the accelerator. This may turn out to be time-consuming and error-prone, when you would like to change the reference set of input specifications or when you simply have to add a new one. MDC coprocessor generator analyzes the multi-dataflow specification generated by the MDC baseline core, and retrieves its I.O. footprint which includes the I.O. port number, their size and their token patterns and some application-related information as the IDs of the specifications that will be delegated to the accelerator and I.O. ports they will use. The former are adopted to generate, on the one hand, the scripts for the automated generation in the Xilinx Vivado environment of the coprocessor and the integrated system intended as interconnection of processor and coprocessor. 
On the other hand, they are adopted to configure the architectural template of the coprocessor itself, as for example to define the state machine and to configure registers. The latter lead to the software driver's generation. A ready-to-be-used peripheral for Xilinx Vivado environment is assembled by means of the coprocessor deployment script that, basically, puts together the architectural template, the software drivers and the coarse-grained reconfigurable substrate coming from the MDC baseline core backend. The integrated system, where the coprocessor is coupled with a host processor by means of a communication link, is also automatically generated by the integrated system deployment script. Different configuration options are available to the users, so that the accelerator can be customized on the given preferences. In particular, the user shall specify, the target FPGA board to be used, the kind of host processor, microblaze or ARM, the nature of the communication link, which can be memory mapped or FIFO based both leveraging on the Amber Axie 4 system bus, and if a direct memory access device has to be used to speed up communication. Let's quickly see how to set the parameters in the user interface to run the described additional features of MDC. First steps are the same as in the baseline core case. The user shall specify the input dataflow specifications to be combined and shall provide the communication protocol and the HDL component library to be adopted. Then, if he or she wants to exploit also one or more MDC additional features, different tabs are provided. For the structural profiler, the user has to specify the adopted characterization files, providing area, static power and timing data to be used during the design space exploration. Moreover, he or she shall also specify which is the primary constraint to be considered among area, power and frequency during the exploration, since a global optimum often cannot be found. For the dynamic power manager, it is necessary to set the adopted target technology that can either be FPGA or ASIC, the maximum number of power saving cells to be used only if FPGA is targeted, since there is a limited number of clock buffers per board and the kind of power saving technique to be implemented among clock gating, power gating or hybrid. For the coprocessor generator the user shall choose the kind of coupling memory mapped or FIFO based, the host processor microblaze or ARM, if using or not the DMA and, finally, the targeted FPGA board. To learn more about MDC and its applications, here you are some references. This video concludes the presentation of MDC. Step-by-step -step tutorials will come soon. Thanks for watching.